Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lobster Roll Series Week 7. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a surprise. This week, we're doing 2v2. I start out this week with a match with the match between Fruity and Bloa and Bakabatsu and Legamanon, which is currently just setting up its map. They have decided to go with Vantage. So they will be playing on Vantage. Um, and also this is the new map pool for this week. It is actually quite different. There, I mean, granted, 2v2 as opposed to 1v1, so there's going to be a massive shift in the maps available. But that's kind of the thing. So yeah, we'll be getting that going in... Well, pretty much now. Uh. Anyway. So yeah, we... Right, sorry about that. Some... Rules question in the, or not rules question, rules dispute, I suppose, in the tournament channel. But anyway, yeah, so we are, we are ready to go. Waiting on the players to set up everything, and then we can begin. So, Legomenon. I got on Bakuhatsu going for Cloak and Spiders. While on the other side, we have Blow and Fruity, who have not yet chosen what factories to start with. Their plops are uncertain. Cloaky and... What's our last one here? So Cloaky Spider on a map like this kind of makes sense. I was expecting possibly Rowers, but... I mean, it's a pretty small map, so having Cloakies or Glaive, like Glaive Swarm, but also sh shifting into, you know, Knights, that's, that makes sense. It's small enough of a map that you can do that in terms of an, of an assault. Low, on the other hand, with the Rovers, and that makes a lot more sense considering this is a flat, fairly large map. So I expect we're going to be seeing, you know, I mean, your standard thing, quick, quick Glaives into... The Scorcher, or Cook Glaive and Scorcher versus Glaive Flea into Venom Redback. It will be interesting to see if the players choose something else. But then, yeah, from there into, like, probably Night Sling, Recluse. But let's see. Oh, Blow going straight for Fencers. So we have defensive player, offensive player on that side, and on Legomenon and Bakuatsu's side, Flea Venom with Glaive support. So East team definitely is in, definitely is in a back foot summit position. I mean, they are defensive. They are not trying to push out hard. They're just trying to set up their economy quickly. Possibly, we'll see if, how quickly it goes relative to their opponent. I mean, this is this is a lot. Like, two Masons and a Conjurer on a map with, like, 25 metal on each side. It's it's definitely a gamble. I mean, if it pays off, then it'll work really well. And the fact that there's Fleas is the main problem. Well, I mean, one Glaive will take care of basically any number of Fleas, so... Yeah, but a Glaze support shouldn't be a problem. However, Glaze coming in here, taking the unguarded Conjurer over to the north. Fruity losing their Conjurer right off the bat. This is kind of what I was talking about in terms of gamble. And again, East team has hardly any offensive units. Well, Bleatnik, they've gone pretty all in on this, actually. They have, they have one Weaver. I think they're about to get a Conjurer, but they've been much more conscientious of the fact that they are playing a game where units try to kill each other. And have made units to try to kill the others. 
Chet have been doing a surprisingly, well, unsurprisingly good job of that because that's what they are for. And actually, as a result, East Team, thanks to their rating, is now eh, 5 metal per second ahead, give or take. But of course, the problem is that with the Eastern Team, and they were entirely banking on the fact that they had all these constructors, and, well, they lost one. They still have two Masons. They got back the Conjurer, so there's still some hope. At least in theory, Venom coming in here over to the south, not really going to be able to do too much. I know I blow his commander. Beyond that, no. The key thing, though, is that the Eastern Team is now being contained to this corner. We can already see the Lagaunon's commander going over to the southeast along with a welder, sorry, weaver. And as well, we have Bakkad's commander going over to the northwest. Eastern team is being locked into the northeast corner very quickly, and they aren't pushing to contest that. So, while economically they're kind of on par, Eastern team's growth will stall, like, right now. Or pretty soon. Like, this... This set of metal extractors, that'll be the main battlefield. But honestly, the only competition from Eastern Team is this one Mason. And that one Mason is not going to be enough. Anything else trying to come in for support would be these fencers, which are honestly too far away to really help. So Bleednik from here will be able to essentially take the entire rest of the map. So I'm harassing coming over here from the Eastern Team to try to push back a little bit. Unfortunately, those four glaives are kind of dead in the water. There's no way for them to escape. There's not much they can really do, because the only thing that's going to get there is the commander, and the commander will be able to rip them to pieces. That being said, though, Bacchus's commander pushing back Fruities. I mean, that is... That's a contest if you're seeing one. Over to the south, though, we have Fencer Venom fights, and the Fencers are unsurprisingly winning. And Venoms are kind of a riot unit, Fences are kind of a skirmisher. So, that is what you'd expect. Though also the numbers are really in favor of the Eastern Team. So I can see possibly an approach for the Eastern Team right now. It's a timing sensitive one. They only have a few, maybe a minute at most, of having even economy. If they punch through the center, that might be able to get them to the game. It wouldn't be an easy thing to do. But it might work. I don't know if they're going to give it a shot, though. I mean, they got the fencers in place. They have the commander down. That's one. Oh, nicely done. Getting rid of Bakkaz's commander overextended a little bit. Fruity has kept their commander alive. At the same time, the fencers are piling up at the front door of Bleatnik's base. And while the economy advantage is starting to take hold for Bleatnik, they haven't really managed to turn into a production advantage significantly yet, so that's going to come down to these fencers. And if anything else comes in assault-wise, what those do as well. Unfortunately, having lost all the glaives to killing the commander, Eastern Team doesn't have a whole lot in the way of raiding forces. Not to mention their fencers are very split up, so the glaives can just take them out one at a time. There's nothing able to stop them. That's ah, two fencers down, three down. I think the fourth might be able to survive thanks to the help of... And yes, it does. Thanks to the help of the other fencers. That fourth fencer barely survives. And in all this time, the Eastern team has managed to build up and start to contest the Southeast. But the North side is clearly where they're more concerned. Like, they're fine splitting the map North-South from the looks of it. But they need to actually split the map North if they can... Or take the North side if they want to be able to do that. So as it stands, the Eastern team, they are not doing too bad. Like, all things considered. Although I say that right, oh, never mind, a nice kill on the, on the warrior. They're great using the terrain to keep the glaze alive as they get close. I think that was with no losses. Like, one or two losses in general, but for that, I don't think that Reaver managed to get anything. So... That's not a bad situation for the Eastern team, but it is still a bit questionable. The Eastern team, Fruity in particular, does have a scary army going over to the north, and it is it is enough th that Bleednik does not have an enough forces to defend this. Sending one Venom up would help, but it looks like there's much more concern on the part 
for keeping the south safe. But that means the north will fall, and the eastern team will be able to expand there. Hard-fought victory on their part, but they absolutely earned it. Same time, though, there is the spider assault in the main base. Eastern team trying to force this out with fencers. Managing to defend with some losses, but still defense has been successful. Fruity's, Fruity's Glaze coming in to try to support, but they are going to be ripped apart because Venom Redback does that to Glaze. Claw not finding a whole lot of purchase. I don't expect that to work. Honestly, I'm, I'm surprised we're not seeing Ravagers. I'm, I am genuinely surprised we're not seeing Ravagers. I right, steal with what we're seeing right now. That's really the best option. Like, Badgers are fine enough, but they're not going to be able to really push in quickly. Oh, but the Scorch is coming in. That is a good move. Nice shot over to the south. There's not a whole lot defending it. The commander has moved on. Wait, wait where's the Goblin's commander, anyway? Ah, over here. They have moved on. They are no longer really worried about the south side. They're worried about actually hitting Eastern's main base. But, now uh, we're getting into that knight I was talking about earlier. In fact, Cloak Knights. Cloak Knights and Reavers. And that should be able to wipe out this entire force. Fruity's commander trying to come in here to help out. Fortunately, completely unupgraded. It's going to get stunned out before it's even able to do anything. Fruity, you just... Oh, did you just lose... Yeah, you just lost your chance to jump away. That is Fruity's commander going down. And with that, the north side is going to be once again Bleatnik's territory. Not a whole lot they can do here. Same time, the Gominon's commander just continuing to hard push into the eastern side of the east base. Completely locked off this southeast expansion side as well, and that's getting destroyed, but entirely at Bleedix Leisure. The Gominon's commander, on the other hand, being put up against a wall when it comes to these Scorchers. Thankfully, the well, there's the, oh, the Weaver. Oh, that Weaver, so close. That Weaver Repair, the only thing keeping the Gominon's Commander alive right there. That is huge. If a Gominon had lost their Commander, this entire southeast side would fall very shortly afterwards. There just isn't enough in the way of defenses. Having the Commander be able to actually actively build this stuff and support it, strictly necessary to keep it alive. And even as it is, it's still going to be a hard battle. But East Team can only advance so far with the Commander still there. Same time, though, there... Look, well, Bleatnik, Bakabats in particular, going over to the north and completely ripping that apart. Whatever had been taken over to the north is lost. And whatever has been taken to the southeast has also just been lost. And the Gominus Commander... Still at risk, still not safe, can't really advance, but can still... You know, continue to support, rebuild, set up more defenses. Hold the line to some degree, at least. It's not great, but the drones are helpful to at least keep them in the game. And that's with the drone nerf, too. They, they don't get as many drones. I think that'd be level 6 before they even get one battle drone. So, as it stands, Bleatnik is managing... Well, managing three fronts remarkably well. Really down to this one over here. It shouldn't be game with this alone. It's... It's definitely scary, but I mean, between the Scorchers and the Claws, there should be enough to deter forces coming in. Although I say that, I speak too soon. The Scorchers trying to come in and get taken up by the Venoms, and the Redbacks just finish them off. Claws still just exercising attrition on all these forces. But ultimately, the Eastern team can only last so long. They are 4,000 metal behind on attrition. They are able to get some stuff over to the north, however. They... But only a few Ronin, that is not enough to put a significant dent in Bleedix forces. And over to the south, well, a decent chunk of that solar wall just got ripped to pieces. Now, Bleednik looking for that final push over to the north. And whether or not they find it is down to... Well, down to what defenses are there, and honestly, there's not much. The Claws are not in position there. They're much more focused on getting rid of the Spiders. There's not a whole lot of skirmishes here. Some Ronin, which are managing to work with the slings to help get rid of some of these forces over to the north, but honestly, it's just holding the line. It's not really able to push back significantly. Unfortunately, the eastern team is just... They're just behind economically. 
they are struggling to build enough units and they're they aren't managing to kill enough to really make it worthwhile like looking at their actual army value they are well let's go by this so yeah eastern team no oh, right eastern team is they're there they're low 4650 that is not that is not ideal and 4650 to 8000 it's like that is this entire force right here going down you have to kill this twice losing no units in order to even things out and that's not taking into account the economic and production va value differences and mostly economic production is pretty even across the board but yeah like i said bleednik they took most of the map they've turned that into a large enough army that east can't do much about it and east had their opportunity pushed for it a little bit but really not very hard again ravagers would have been a great choice in that situation so they ended up not managing to get it, and as a result, they're now stuck. Desperately trying to defend. The north side is just getting wrecked. Building after building, as the knights slowly walk in. And over to the south, Claw's desperately trying to push back the spiders, but Bleednik, again, able to just hold that no problem while the north side gets torn to pieces. More supporting glaives should be coming in to help with the knights. No, they're... Yeah, there are. There they are. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, interesting choice coming in here. We have Scythe, but that's not enough. I mean, the Scythe against the Wind Generators. Blow it doesn't believe it to be enough. Fruity might, though. I mean, it is their Scythe. But even that, it's only so much. I mean, Bleeding has so much power. That one Scythe is not going to be significant. And realizing that East Team throws in the towel and Bleednik takes it. Well done to Bleednik. So yeah, overall, pretty decent, actually. No metal excess! Congratulations! You did not excess metal. That is not a sarcastic congratulations. That is genuine. Not accessing metal is a huge part of playing the game well, and they did exactly that. Granted, that's why I wanted to watch this game, because I knew the players were strong, but also evenly matched. So, that was that. Very good game. I interesting show of map control and you know economic versus semi-economic starts and yeah i do think there was a bit of a chance for east team but again that came down to leveraging their economic start and early strong attrition wins to push in the center where bleeding was kind of weak with assault units and just try to take deal as much damage as possible maybe go from there and then spread north or spread south but trying to attack the sides directly just led to falling apart so yeah, we are on to... What is the next match here? Alright, let's see what is up. Oh, so far... Okay, Steel Balloon Insert versus... Pen... Saber Penwin. That will be the next match because that is the only match left. The other matches have been played out. That's, I mean, simple as that. The other matches got played. So, yeah, like I went on Bakuhatsu. Good job to you. Moving on to the next match, and... Anira and Asainane also moving on to the next match. Now we just a Steel Blue and Insert against Penwin and Saber. Let's see how that goes. Actually, I don't know. I kind of want to do Leon and Bakuatsu versus Golda and Crow. Because that'll probably be starting, like, right now. Hmm. What have we been up for? Not very long. Maybe we'll just do the entire winner's bracket as a single video. Nah, that'll be an hour and a half. Alright, let's take a short break, and then we'll be back with the winner's semifinals. <laughs> 